This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermin Sheikh. We turn now to the controversies around media coverage of the crisis here in the U.S. Over the weekend, NBC reversed its decision to remove veteran correspondent Ayman Mohyuddin from Gaza. Mohyuddin was removed shortly after he reported on witnessing Israel's killing of four boys on a Gaza beach. His reports gave voice to Palestinian victims and placed the siege in the wider context of Israeli occupation, drawing criticism from supporters of Israel's offensive. NBC's decision to remove one of its top reporters sparked a massive backlash on social media, with the hashtag Let Ayman Report becoming a trending topic on Twitter. Days later, NBC backed down and Ayman Mohyuddin resumed his reporting on Sunday. In a Twitter post, Mohyuddin acknowledged the social media campaign that demanded his return, saying, quote, Thanks for all the support. Proud of NBC's continued commitment to cover the Palestinian side of the story. On Monday, one of MSNBC's frequent contributors, Rula Jabril, took to the network's airwaves to criticize the initial decision to remove Ayman and the broader exclusion of Palestinian voices. Jabril was speaking on MSNBC's Ronan Farrow Daily. We are ridiculous. We are disgustingly biased when it comes to this issue. Look at how many airtime Netanyahu and his folks uh, have on air on a daily basis. Andrea Mitchell and others. I never seen one Palestinian being interviewed on these same issues. Well, push back on that for, a We've had Palestinian Maybe for 30 seconds, and then you have 25 minutes for Bibi Netanyahu and half an hour for Naftali Bennett and many others. Listen, the Ayman Mohyuddin story. Let's talk about this. We are home, and we can this. Ayman Mohyuddin is covering the Palestinian sides, and we get upset. It's too pro-Palestinian. We don't like it. We push him back, and thanks for social media that brought him in. Let's talk about these Point issues taken, but doesn't it reveal home. equally our thinking that we now have Ayman Mohyuddin on air, and I think there's been very fair yes, and balanced thanks to social media, and thanks for the pushback from the public opinion. And I'm not saying that everybody's like this, but it's one-tenth is giving to the Palestinian voice and 99% to the Israeli voice, and that's why the public opinion is pro-Israeli, which is the opposite in the rest of the world. Shortly after the interview, Jabril tweeted, quote, My forthcoming TV appearances have been cancelled. Is there a link between my expose and the cancellation? On Tuesday night, she appeared on MSNBC's Chris Hayes. We're joined now by Rula Jabril to talk about what happened. Uh, Rula Jabril is an author and political analyst who frequently appears on MSNBC. She worked for many years as a broadcast journalist in Italy, where she also covered the Middle East. She's the author of Miral, which was made into a film by Julian Schnabel, Welcome to Democracy Now. Thank you for uh, it's having It's good to me. have you with us. Um, can you talk about what happened and the decision you made to speak out on your own network? Well, I, I decided to speak on my own network because we are liberal Democrats. And, and part of the debate of any media in the liberal democratic landscape is to discuss our own flaws as well as others, not only Bridgegate, but also Mediagate, I would say, and media scandal regarding the bias covering of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And I looked at studies, and the studies that were made by many scholars, respected American scholars, Juan Col and others, who are referring to the covering of the media, how much airtime is giving to the Israeli officials and how much airtime is giving to the Palestinian official and it's a US landscape that is so biased so for example in 2012 you had on CNN alone 45 Israeli officials interviewed versus 11 Palestinians and when it comes to this conflict today in 2014 you have 17 Israeli uh, politicians official interviewed versus one Palestinian so we are going backwards regarding this issue and and that forms and shape the public opinion in America that then transfer and become political support unconditional to Israel to a policy that is very destructive both to the Israelis and to American stands in the world and their credibility were you the only Palestinian uh, consultant or uh, contributor on MSNBC absolutely yes so what I, happened after after your appearance on Ronan Farrow, where you said what you said, criticizing their coverage? I received emails of cancellation, and I asked a question about whether these cancellations are related to what I said earlier. I never had any. Tried to call the producers, and nobody answered the phone. Then I tweeted what I tweeted, and uh, immediately there was a social media uproar. I understood. 
Listen, I worked in Egypt. I was kicked out of the country because I interviewed Amr Suleiman, the head of Secret Service. I asked him about torturing. I interviewed um, Silvio Berlusconi in Italy. I'm accustomed with this. When I pushed Silvio Berlusconi on corruption and scandals, my TV show was shut down. I'm accustomed to this. I did not, with all honesty, <laughs> expect this from us liberal media and us who are advocating Telling, going out saying, we tell the truth, and we cover this in an unbiased way. I did not expect that. Um, the alternate writer, Max Blumenthal, spoke to an anonymous NBC producer, uh, who he said described, quote, a top-down intimidation campaign aimed at presenting an Israeli-centric view of the attack on the Gaza Strip, unquote. In his piece for Alternate, Blumenthal wrote, quote, the NBC producer told me that MSNBC President Phil Griffin and NBC executives are micromanaging coverage of the crisis, closely monitoring contributors' social media accounts and engaging in a, quote, witch hunt against anyone who strays from the official line, Blumenthal wrote. The producer told Blumenthal, quote, loyalties are now being openly questioned. Did you have any experience of that, Rula? How I long were say, you a contributor I've been at there MSNBC? For two years, and, and I've been there for two years. And I have to say, I was talking about the American landscape, not only MSNBC, which been actually a little bit better than others. Uh, but I never experienced anything like this. I mean, I understood doing what I did in Egypt would lead me to, to be kicked out of the country. I understood uh, in Italy, where Berlusconi controlled most of the media. I I was shocked because most of my um, friends in the Middle East would tell me, you know, you will have an issue in America. And I always thought, no way. We are truth tellers. We are fact checkers. We are people that that actually cover both sides. This is what America is stand for. And I hope that uh, MSNBC and other networks will actually revise their policies and and will have more voices. It doesn't have to be me. It's not about me. We have a media scandal that we need to expose. We are responsible of these failing policies in, the, in, in Gaza and in Israel. And you tried to raise this before in the two years that oh, you were a contributor. Uh, privately, I raised it with so many, 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 many people in the inside. I've been uh, pitching myself to talk about these issues uh, on many shows. And I've been privately meeting with producers and others, and I told them, I said, listen, you have an issue there. Our credibility here at stake. Uh, we can't talk about Bridgegate for six months, and then when it comes to this, we decide we duck our heads and we decide to be exactly like the other networks. We can be different. We can be much more bolders, and we can be aggressive. And maybe the rates are this way because of um, because of this. Uh, I think most of them were, were agreeing privately with me, but then when it comes to what goes on air, I don't think they didn't have any power. Now, you did go on Chris Hayes last night. Absolutely. Um, Chris he, Hayes contacted me late in the afternoon. And he's on MSNBC. And he's on MSNBC. Of course, we disagreed, but, you know, in the media, we can't agree to disagree. We have uh, Joe Scarborough criticizing over and over, and he's fine, and he's okay. But one thing is to criticize certain things, but is this a hot issue that nobody can touch? Is this what America is becoming about? So did you lose your job as a contributor? I have no idea. I still don't know. Uh, my contract is up, and we're negotiating still. Hmm. And following your appearance on the show, you said one of the things that you hoped your comments would precipitate would be a national debate uh, on the question of Israel-Palestine and how it's covered. What kind of shape do you think that debate would take? And if it were up to you, what kinds of issues should be raised more frequently in the mainstream media on this particular issue? I think what we need to ask, are we really uh, guaranteeing uh, by supporting unconditionally this Israeli government, right-wing government, are we really helping Israel being more secure in the long term? And ultimately, American interests and stand in the world. Is that what's happening? And look, this policy with Gaza has been failing for the last eight years. Uh, we had six bombardments in the last eight years, and this did not topple Hamas and did not limit weaken Hamas. Actually, it empowered more and more Hamas, and moderates like myself. And for me, Hamas is the ultimate liability for, for the Palestinian people. But this did not empower moderates. Moderates has been telling Israel over and over, we want a peace deal. We will agree on most conditions that you want. Um, and as Gideon Levy said, in this venue, in this same venue, the problem with our policy that we want to keep the status quo, that means military occupation in the West Bank and East Jerusalem and Gaza under siege. 
and we want and and what what we are doing in the media we're portraying actually a false image where what's happening in Israel and if you ask anybody uh, uh, in, whether in New York, in D.C., in other places, what do you think is happening? They will tell you, oh, well, Israel was minding its own business. The Palestinians start shooting missiles out of the blue. This is not the reality. This is not what's going on. And the context of this is what leading the public opinion to support unconditionally Israel. And politicians will do what's popular, not what's right. We need to do what's right. We in the media have a mission, whether it's MSNBC, Democracy Now!, CNN. We have a mission. We're truth tellers, and we can shape public opinion to protect public interest. Rula, you have a fascinating story yourself, which you wrote about in your book, Miral, which was made into a film. Uh, can you talk about where you were born um, and your own life story? Look, I was born in Haifa. I am an Arab Israeli. I'm a holder of an Israeli citizen. I have uh, my family lived all of their lives in East Jerusalem. I was raised in an orphanage. Uh, my family is both Muslims and Christians. I am married to a Jewish man, and I really believe in two-state solutions. A year ago, I discovered that I have a Jewish sister, because my mother, uh, that died when I was five years old, actually had a relationship, and I discovered a year ago that she had, I have a Jewish sister. That is tweeting today. And these days, uh, killing Arabs is a value. This is the reality that I live in. And, every, and I have to be truth because of what I've seen in the Middle East and because of what I witness, whether it's in refugee camps, under military occupation, occupation under siege, I've seen how pain, grief, and when you keep 60 percent of the population that go almost hungry to bed, and 90 percent without clean water, the only thing that can rise is extremism. And the solution to this is not to bombard them all together in one place. The solution to this is actually lifting the siege, empowering them financially, and let them themselves, uh, you know, create a moderate leadership that eventually can take over. Uh, we didn't manage to topple Hamas, and this is facts. This is. We are failing in our strategy in how to contain extremists. Hamas was, was dead politically. We will manage with this war, actually, to revive Hamas and its power and its grip on the Palestinian coast. How did you end up going from uh, Haifa, um, growing up in an orphanage, to becoming a broadcaster in Italy? Simply when I was 17 and a half, I won a scholarship from the Italian government. I went to Italy. I studied what I, I studied there. I attended college. I became the first anchor woman in the Italian television, uh, it, first a foreign anchor woman, black anchor woman in the Italian television. I was attacked by the right, uh, especially during the Iraqi war, because I challenged their views on the Iraqi war. When I visited Iraq, it was clear to me that there is no way that a military solution will uh, will be met with, with cheering, and, and it was clear to me that the country would be divided immediately and the, the, the Shiites will take over. Um, so I wrote about this. I was challenged by the right-wing government in Italy on these views. I was even called the N-word on air by one of the ministers of Silvio Berlusconi, who, who actually was pushed to resign three days after because of the uproar of the media because of that. Uh, then I worked for so many years in Italy. I was a reporter. I, was, I read the news. And then I decided to go to my own world. I went to Egypt. I worked there for three months. I was on-air journalist. I broadcast a TV show until I start asking the wrong question, a tough question to the establishment. After that, I was off-air, kicked out of the country. And I hope to find a platform somewhere. And you've worked, you just talked about your work in, in Italy. How would you say the reporting in Europe on Israel-Palestine compares oh. to what you've seen Day since you've come night. to the U.S.? Day and night. Day and night. And simply because of the images that reporters bring from the ground and are allowed to show on air. Here, you know, we have a problem with what we show. If you, and, and what, what, the tipping point for me is when people like Rihanna and Selena Gomez are not even celebrities allowed to, 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 to sympathize with the people that are dying, not with Hamas. When they wrote their Twitter and saying, you know, we pray for peace in Gaza and we sympathize with, with the victims, and everybody backlashed on them. And when even John Kerry was scared when his microphone was open on Fox, and then he had to, to actually walk back that line. That shows you something. Everybody's scared when it comes to these issues. It's time that we in the media have the courage to ex we expose so many wrongdoing 
from our own government here and, and their wrongdoing abroad. It's time to dis it's, it's time really to do a service, not a disservice to our audience and to our interest in the world. And also to the Israeli, many Israeli people that and Jewish people, as you showed in your in your network, that are today calling on Israel to stop their policies. Rula, we want to thank you for being with us. Rula Jabril, author, political analyst, uh, frequently appears on MSNBC. She worked for many years as a broadcast journalist in Italy, where she also covered the Middle East, is the author of Miral, which was also made into a film. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, a debate on the U.S. media coverage of the Israel-Gaza conflict. Stay with us.